Guys, what's going on? I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope everything's good wherever you are. Uh, guys, I hope you guys are keeping well. Guys, it's quite hot today, man. It's quite hot today in the UK, even though we're still in March. It's really, really hot. Um, I'm absolutely exhausted. Um, I love I love it being hot rather than cold and grim. And, you know, I prefer it being sweltering hot rather than it being, um, you know, dull, grim, rainy. You know, I know some of you are part for, uh, you know, that watch me are from parts of the world where it's hot, it's, you know, beautiful. I wish I was always, I, I prefer it to be really hot. I know hot sometimes can be uncomfortable, especially when it's too hot, but I prefer the weather when it's hot rather than really cold or, you know, it's just hard to get up. Like when it's hot, it's easier to get up in the morning. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just much better. Uh, the good thing about today is Friday, so uh, the weekend is upon us. Um, Guys, I wanted to talk about an interview that Bernard Hopkins did now. Bernard Hopkins said that Jamal Charlo is the only guy that can beat Saul Canelo Alvarez. He feels he's the only guy that's going to give Saul Canelo Alvarez a tough fight. And he was talking about spiritual side of things, the mental side of things. And he goes, Jamal Charlo believes and he can beat Canelo Alvarez. Um... He also said that, you know, Canelo Alvarez would destroy David Benavidez. Uh, you know, look. A lot of people are high on Jamal Charlo. Now, one thing I will say about Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins is the biggest Canelo fanboy. And what I mean by that is that he, he admires Canelo Alvarez. If you look at every time he gives an interview about Canelo, it's literally always praise, praise, praise. Uh, and he doesn't really think anyone can beat Canelo Alvarez. Obviously, he's very close with Canelo. He promoted him. He's also seen him mature into a great fighter. So Bernard Hopkins knows Canelo more, better than most. He's also been a great fighter himself. So Bernard Hopkins knows uh, what it takes to be a great fighter. Bernard Hopkins knows uh, how a fighter develops and gets better over time. Bernard has been there and done that. Bernard is a very experienced campaigner. He, you know, he's one of the greatest middleweights of all time. Um, and his record speaks for itself. You know, what he's achieved in the game speaks for itself. So when a guy like that is in a very high praise of another fighter, uh, you know we're looking at a very special talent. And Canelo Alvarez, as I've been reiterating to you guys for many years, is a special talent. Um, but if Bernard Hopkins sees something in Jamal Charlo that, you know, he feels can beat Canelo Alvarez, then, you know, that should be taken seriously just as his praise for Canelo Alvarez. Because like I said... Bernard Hopkins sometimes for me gives Canelo Alvarez too much praise like he basically said that Bivol has no chance has no shot uh, he also said like that he also I think he's also said Beterbiev has no shot no chance he says Benavidez uh, gets destroyed by Canelo Alvarez and a lot of you disagree with that a lot of you think Benavidez is going to cause Canelo trouble so it just shows how highly Bernard Hopkins looks at Canelo sometimes he may be giving him a bit too much praise and what I mean by too much praise maybe he's, he's giving uh, he's put, making Canelo out to be something that he's not in the sense that, you know, to say that he completely destroys Benavidez. I, I agree with Bernard, but I'm just going off what you guys think. You guys seem to think that Benavidez is some kind of monster and Benavidez can beat Canelo Alvarez. So you guys seem to think that, you know, Benavidez is, 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 is the guy that's going to give Canelo Alvarez trouble. Not me, because I don't rate Benavidez that highly. But you guys seem to be very high on David Benavidez. So uh, I don't know what to make of it. I don't know. Look, personally, I think, I think Jamal Charlo, for me, uh, I don't think he's that tough a fight for Canelo. That's just my opinion. I think he's I think he's a good fight. I think it's a fight that we'd all like to see. But is it a tough fight? Um, not really, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. Bernard sees it differently. I actually think the toughest fight for Canelo Alvarez isn't Jamal Charlo. Um, is uh, Arthur Baterbia. But everyone, look, everyone sees things differently. Everyone looks at things differently. And Bernard probably looks at uh, Baterbia. I mean, um, Jamal. And he thinks Jamal is the guy that could potentially beat Canelo, you know. But so that that for me... Uh, that for me is his opinion, you know, and he's entitled to it. This is a guy with a lot of experience. And let's not forget, Bernard Hopkins was very close to Jamal Charlo and Canelo Alvarez. 
uh, because uh, I believe that Jamal Charlo was under Oscar De La Hoya. I must have been. I think he must have been with Bernard, under promoted by Bernard Hopkins and Oscar. So I wouldn't be surprised that they've built a good relationship. Obviously, his good relationship with Canelo comes from being, you know, promoting him and being close to him. And uh, Canelo had a lot of respect for Bernard Hopkins. So you know, look. I and and Bernard has said this for many in many interviews. It's not just like he's just naming a name. He's been saying for a long time that you know the only guy that potentially could push Canelo is Jamal Charlo. I don't know what he exactly sees. He sees something from the mental side that this is a guy that believes in himself. This is a guy that you know believes in his ability, and he you know he can he's the only guy out there. Whereas he feels like the other guys mentally, yeah, they're beaten before they get in the ring. Where they he feels Jamal Charlo on the other hand is a guy that's going to be come in and bring in it but he's not going to be defeated before he steps inside that ring uh look we, only time will tell i think most people have been very disappointed with jamal charlo's opponents now he also said uh that you know jamal charlo's not a guy that he doesn't want to test himself against the best uh, now the people around him you know the, the i think it was marcus vegas asking him the people around him obviously fans have criticized jamal for his opponents and i've i've been one you know that criticized him because i think the opponents selecki and stuff these guys are these guys shouldn't you know we shouldn't be seeing those fights anymore you know it it's just not it's not a good fight as far as i'm concerned but the point Bernard was making is that, you know, Jamal Charlo as a fighter, he wants to fight and test himself against the best. So is he insinuating the people around him are, you know, potentially protecting him or the people around him aren't doing their job? And for me, that is a lot of, um, that is what goes on off in boxing. You know, the fanboys of fighters, they try to diminish each fighter and say, oh, he's ducking, he's a dodger. But I don't really think most fighters are duckers and dodgers. If I'm honest with you, I think it comes down to the promotion. I think it comes down to all of that. I do feel that the fighter can push for it. But at the end of the day, some of these, some things, you know, we as fans don't have full side information to. We don't know what, you know, goes off it behind the scenes. Like Jamal Charlo, if he's not getting a big fight, let's not forget he needs a fight. He can't just hang around and wait for a big fight. He He's a fighter. He wants to get paid and he wants to fight. If, if the big fights can't happen, he wants to get in the ring and fight because he wants to be paid. So at the end of the day, like you've got to look at it from a fighter's perspective. A fighter looks at it at a way that, you know, get me a big fight. But if his team and promoters can't get him the big fight, then he needs to fight. So Jamal Charlo can't just afford to hang around and hang about because he, he's, he's a guy in his prime. He needs to fight. He needs to stay active. It's just the way the things have been handled. It's the way that, you know, these guys have been handled over the years. I actually think it's been a very poor, very, very poor because, you know, look, we expect these guys to be fighting top tier competition. And unfortunately, Charlo hasn't been fighting top tier competition. It's been fairly poor over the years. Uh, his competition has been, you know, nothing short of appalling as far as I'm concerned. Um, I actually think that, you know, the competition has been uh, very, very poor and for me it's time for these guys to step up it's time for these guys to step up and you know show how good they are show if they are the real deal show you know all the hype that we've been hearing about these guys for for so long it's time for them to prove it and i and unfortunately for me i just i just i just don't think that you know they're doing justice to their their talent they're doing justice to their career uh they're doing justice to their legacy because at this minute these guys haven't got a legacy these guys haven't got a top you know they're, they're not hall of famers not even close to it so you know guys like mike tyson you know who, who was um you know who jamal charlo was on his show those guys look mike tyson might have not even been the best of his era but he's a hall of famer he's a guy that left a name he fought everybody in his era he wanted to fight the best you know, and he's frustrated because in his time, the best used to fight the best. And he's like, like he was talking about Spence. And I'm going to do another video about that. Uh, the way he was saying that these guys just don't call each other out. They don't fight each other. And this is something that, you know, the mindset of the fighters of the past were completely different. And I saw some of your comments and, you know, you're disagreeing and stuff. But like, trust me, the mindsets of the fighters of the past were just completely different. You know, they, they fought. They didn't care about who they fought. They'd fight anyone. You know, the mindset of the fighters today are different. It's become more business oriented. It's become more about money. It's become more about money. 
You know, it's not about, you know, creating a legacy. Back then, it was about money, creating a legacy, all of that. Like, there was no ducking and judging. The fights were happening. And a lot of people say, why was boxing so great back in the day? The reason why boxing was great back in the day, because the best used to fight the best. How many fights do we get today that really should be happening that never happen um, that we want to see? Because of the fact that these guys are not fighting each other. So it becomes demoralizing and frustrating for the fans. And boxing is diminishing as a result. Uh, and now we've got these gimmicks going off where you're getting YouTubers fighting and you're getting all these guys fighting and those fights are causing a lot, of, you know, making a lot, they've got a lot of interest. There's a lot of interest. There's a lot of, because they're bringing their fans, they're bringing their audiences into the in, into the sport. Uh, I wouldn't say really into the sport, just to watch them. It's a spectacle. Um, but these fighters need to fight each other. They need The best need to fight the best. You know, the hardcore fa fans are a massive audience. You know, there's a huge boxing is a massive sport and it's a sport that's followed by a lot of people, lot of people, a lot of people sport, uh, su you know, support boxing or follow boxing. Right. Uh, unfortunately, it's just that, you know, I feel like the, the popularity of boxing over the years has diminished and we don't see those superstars like we did back in the past, like Mike Tyson, Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, guys like that, because of the fact that they don't fight each other. They wait and wait and wait. It's become a business. It's, it's, boxing has become a business. The money has increased in terms of buying the fights. The money has increased for the fighters, but the competition has got worse. The spectacle for fight fans has got worse. Like, we're not getting to see the top guys fight the top guys. Um, I said it in a video before, I feel like I do a lot more videos talking about negotiation tactics and, and all of that rather than actually breaking down fights. And that's because the best aren't fighting the best. Um, but that aside, for me, um, Canelo Alvarez and Jamal Charlo is a good fight. Do I think Jamal Charlo is one of the guys that could beat Canelo? No, not in my opinion. But, you know, Bernard Hopkins has his opinion. Bernard Hopkins sees uh, Jamal Charlo as the only guy that could beat Canelo. So, you know, if that is true, then maybe, look, maybe we need to see Jamal Charlo. We need to see Jamal Charlo against uh, Canelo Alvarez. Let's see. Look, that fight, in my opinion, will, like, Jamal saying he's been calling out Canelo for five, six years. Um... But if he can't get the Canelo fight, make his name fighting other top guys. Um, but I don't see what, from what I've seen from Jamal's career so far, I don't see him to be the guy that's going to beat Canelo Alvarez. I think that guy's going to be Arthur Baterbiev. If Bet I think Baterbiev is the only guy that's going to beat him and possibly most people think will beat Canelo. Um, but Jamal Charlo definitely isn't that guy for me. I just don't see how Jamal Charlo beats Canelo Alvarez. I think that's a relatively comfortable fight and a comfortable win. And no disrespect to Charlo. I like the Charlos, but, you know, Canelo's on a different breed. He's a different level to all, all of these guys. Um, and I just don't see Charlo causing Canelo the threat that, you know, Bernard thinks. But, you know, Bernard knows them both. He's a guy that's very experienced. He's a legend. He knows more about the sport than I do. Maybe he sees something that I don't. Um, but yeah, you look, I, I think Canelo Alvarez would beat Jamal Charlo quite comfortably and probably stop him within nine rounds. But that's just my, that's just my opinion. I might be totally wrong. You know, I've been wrong before and I might be wrong again. So leave your thoughts, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. How do you think the fight between Canelo and Jamal Charlo goes? Uh, do you agree with Bernard Hopkins that Jamal Charlo is the only guy that could beat Canelo? Leave your thoughts. Let me know what you think and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.